Prostate Specific Antigen or PSA. In this video, I will discuss all information about prostate specific antigen, including source of BSA and different forms in the blood, also method of measurement of total and free PSA. Finally, I will discuss interpretation, including all causes of increase in PSA level in the blood. Prostate specific antigen is abbreviated as PSA. Total prostate specific antigen is recognized as TPSA and free form is recognized as FPSA. Sample used for PSA measurement is zero. Reference value up to 4 nanogram per milliliter and it differs with age as shown later in this video. Method of measurement is ELISA test using ELISA kits and ELISA read. PSA structure and function. PSA is a single chain glycoprotein. It is an enzyme and consider one of serine proteinases. Serine proteinase is a proteolytic enzyme. Make proteolysis for proteins. PSA synthesized by prostate gland and released by large quantities into semen fluid, but small quantities can be absorbed and reach it to the blood. As we see in this picture, prostate gland present around urethra and near to urinary bladder. Prostate gland secrete number of elements and PSA is one of them. PSA is secreted by epithelial cells into the lumen of the prostate gland, but small percent can reach to the blood, therefore can be measured in serum sample. Function of PSA PSA is important for fertility in male because prostate gland produces PSA for the ejaculate where it liquefies semen. Because PSA is a proteolytic enzyme, therefore it liquefies the semen. This activity allows sperm to swim freely from ejaculate or seminal coagulum. Also, PSA has important role in dissolving cervical mucus, allowing the entry of sperm into the uterus. Therefore, prostate-specific antigen is important for fertility in males. Importance of prostate-specific antigen Because its concentration is low in the blood, PSA can be measured in the blood to indicate activity of the prostate gland. PSA is considered the most tested tumor marker for prostate gland disease diagnosis because any increased activity or problem in prostate will affect blood levels. Normal concentration range of PSA is from 0 to 4 nanogram per milliliter. Any rise of PSA above normal value gives signal of prostate gland cancer or other problems and it will be discussed in the interpretation section. PSA in the blood. As I said before, PSA is a proteolytic enzyme. If PSA performs this activity in the blood, it will be dangerous for the blood. Therefore, the proteolytic activity of PSA in the blood is inhibited as PSA bound with protease inhibitors, including alpha-1 antichymotrypsin and alpha-2 macroglobulin and other acute phase proteins. But alpha-1 antichymotrypsin and alpha-2 macroglobulin are more important. About 30% PSA present in the blood as a free form. It is not bounded with protease inhibitors. Free form also inactive and cannot perform its proteolytic activity in the blood. There are three forms of PSA in serum. The first major form of PSA is bound with alpha-2 macroglobulin. This form lacks immunoreactivity, as in the picture, it is abbreviated as alpha-MG bound PSA. Alpha-2 macroglobulin makes covering of all antigenic sites on PSA, so that this form lacks immunoreactivity. Antigenic sites are covered so that it cannot react with the antibody in ELISA test. The second major form present in serum is bounded with alpha-1 antichymotrypsin, abbreviated as ACT, and is called ACT-bound PSA. ACT binds only to the active site of PSA, but other antigenic sites 
is not covered so that this form of PSA remain immunologically detectable as there is uncovered antigenic site. It can be detected by antibodies in ELISA test. The third form of PSA is not complex to a protease inhibitor. It means that it is free, not bound with plasma proteins, so that it called free PSA. As in the picture, there is no attached or bounded proteins. This form is also immunologically detectable because all antigenic site is not covered. Therefore, it can be detected by using antibodies in ELISA test. So that in this figure it appears that there is free PSA only in prostate lumen. This form present in the ejaculate and in the seminal fluid. But when PSA reach to the blood, there is three forms. There are alpha Mg bound PSA, ECT bound PSA, and free PSA. Three types: two bound form and one free form of PSA. Free PSA constitute about 30% of total blood PSA. Indications or why we measure PSA? As I said, PSA is used to diagnose prostate gland disease. The important reason to measure PSA is to screen for prostate cancer, and PSA is considered most sensitive test to detect prostate cancer, so that it's used as a tumor marker for prostate. Also, it's used for monitoring patients with prostate cancer. It means that it's used as indicator of recurrence and response to treatment. It means that after removal of prostate cancer by surgery, PSA must decrease in serum. If PSA level increased again, this indicates recurrence of cancer. Also, it is used as indicator for treatment. It means that PSA decreases after treatment, which indicates that response to treatment occurs. Okay. When should screening PSA be done? It means that what is the suitable age to measure prostate-specific antigen for adult male? Modern view required the first measurement at 40 years. If it is normal, then we measure again at 45 years. From 50 years to 75 years old, PSA is measured every other year. If the results of PSA is still normal after each measurement. But if there is rise or abnormal value of PSA, frequency of measurement must be increased. It means that PSA measured several times per year to track the PSA level. Also, in patients with family history of prostate cancer, PSA measured annually to detect early changes in the prostate gland. Measurement of PSA, either total or free PSA. Firstly, I will talk about measurement of free form of PSA. It measured by ELISA kits for free PSA only, as in the picture, monoclonal antibodies used to recognize free PSA. Therefore, this kit can measure free PSA only, cannot measure total PSA. Principle of ELISA test for free PSA. It depends on presence of monoclonal antibodies which is fixed in the solid phase of the well in the micro titer plate of ELISA kits. This antibody is common for PSA. It means that when we add control, which is present in the kit, or patient serum, common antibody against PSA, which is anti-PSA antibody, can bind free and bound PSA. Free form is recognized by letter F, and combined form have letter T. Then a specific antibody added called free PSA monoclonal antibody, which bind with free PSA only. After that, alkaline phosphatase is added, then substrate is added for reaction between enzyme and substrate. The changes in the reaction color is measured by ELISA reader. And this gives us the concentration of the free PSA. The second type of ELISA test is total prostate-specific antigen. In this case, we can use two monoclonal antibody to detect free and combined PSA with ACT. Free and combined four constitute total PSA. ELISA test contain common antibody, 
which is called anti PSA monoclonal antibody. Then the kit control or patient serum is added, which contain free form and combined form. Free form is recognized by F and the combined form is recognized by T. Then we can add monoclonal antibody for free PSA and another one for combined form. Or we can add common antibody anti-total PSA that can bind post type. So that post type are attached to the antibodies. Then alkaline phosphatase is added to the mixture. Then substrate solution. After that, the mixture is incubated for reaction. After developing the reaction color, it measured in ELISA read. The color of reaction indicates the submission of the free and combined form, which is called total PSA. Normal value of PSA. Less than 4 nanogram per milliliter is used as a reference range of PSA. Recently, PSA value can be expressed by the following method. From 0 to 2.5 nanogram per milliliter is called low PSA level. From 2.6 to 10 nanogram per milliliter is called slightly to moderately elevated PSA. From 10 to 19.9 nanogram per milliliter is called moderately elevated PSA. From 20 nanogram per milliliter or more is called significantly elevated PSA level in the blood. These terms is used in the laboratory to indicate PSA levels. It is important to make sequential measurement for PSA. It means that PSA is measured annually, as I said before, to interpret any increase in PSA. Steadized in PSA is concerning and must give attention to prostate. And more tests is performed to detect the cause of the increased PSA. Interpretation of PSA results PSA increase in prostate cancer, in benign prostatic hypertrophy, which is abbreviated as PPH, in prostatic inflammation, which is called prostatitis, also increased in acute urinary retention. In this picture, there is a different shape of prostate gland. The first shape is normal, the second is prostatic hypertrophy, there is enlargement in prostate size, so that there is closure of urethra. The third shape is inflammation of prostate gland, which is called prostatitis. The color changed due to inflammation, which cause hypremia and destruction of the tissues. The last one is a prostate cancer, there is aggregation of cancer cells, which may be carcinoma. The aggregation of cancer cells may cause enlargement of prostate gland. The three disturbances affect the urinary system and may cause closure to urethra and urine retention occur. Acute urine retention causes a transient increase in PSA because after treatment of urine retention, PSA decreased or returned to normal value. This indicates that PSA cannot differentiate between different diseases of the prostate gland. Therefore, additional tests should be performed, such as direct digital examination of prostate gland or ultrasound examination. Making PSA better Other steps should be taken to make PSA test better and increase its sensitivity. These steps include age-adjusted ranges, PSA velocity, and free PSA assessment. The first item is age-based reference range. It means that normal values differ according to age due to enlargement of prostate gland with age. Therefore, the reference value differ with age as follows. At age of 40 to 49 years, PSA is less than 2.5. At age of 50 to 59 years, PSA is less than 3.5. At age of 60 to 69 years, PSA is less than 4.5. At age of 70 to 79 years, PSA is less than 6.5. Therefore, when you interpret PSA results, you must consider the age of the patient.
The second step is PSA velocity. It means rate at which PSA is rising with time. If slow steady rise occurred, it indicates benign enlargement or PPH, while rapid rise indicates prostate cancer. PSA velocity measured after annual PSA measurement and assess the degree of rise, either slow or rapid. The cutoff value of rise is 0.75 nanogram per milliliter per year. If the rise in PSA within 0.75 nanogram per milliliter per year, this is a slow rise. While if rise more than this value, it is a rapid rise and indicate cancer in the prostate gland. The third step to make PSA test better is the assessment of the free PSA. Because measurement of free and total PSA can differentiate between PPH and cancer. Among patients with total PSA from 4 to 10 nanogram per milliliter range, which is called slight to moderate increase, recent studies indicate that men with prostate cancer tend to have lower free PSA compared to total PSA. While in PPH, it has high free PSA compared to total PSA. The PSA released in prostate cancer is more sticky. Therefore, it makes bounding with serum proteins so that percent of free PSA is decreased in prostatic cancer. Therefore, free PSA must be measured with total PSA. Free PSA is measured by ELISA test by nanogram per milliliter. Also, percent of free PSA to total PSA is assessed. Both total PSA and free PSA should be determined on the same serum sample to exclude the effect of measurement difference on PSA level. Percent of free PSA is calculating using the following formula. Free PSA by nanogram per milliliter is divided on total PSA by nanogram per milliliter, then multiply by 100. Therefore, the most important two point to differentiate PPH from cancer includes number one, benign prostate hypertrophy shows high free PSA and slow steady rise. As we see, there is a slow steady rise of PSA in the blood and free PSA is more than 25 births. This indicates benign enlargement of the prostate, while prostate cancer shows lower free PSA, less than 10%. Also, there is a rapid rise of PSA in the blood. As we see, there is a rapid rise of PSA and free PSA is less than 10%. With this result, we must perform prostate biopsy to detect and confirm cancer. Therefore, age difference, PSA velocity and free PSA assessment gives PSA test more diagnostic value to detect prosthetic diseases.